Now let us see the ligaments of the uterus. These are classified as true ligaments and false ligaments. The true ligaments are fibromuscular bands which are 8 in number while the false ligaments are peritoneal folds which are 6 in number. The true ligaments are a pair of round ligaments of the uterus, a pair of McEnroth's ligaments, a pair of uterosacral ligaments posteriorly and a pair of pubocervical ligaments anteriorly. While the false ligaments are peritoneal folds, the uterovesical fold seen anteriorly, the recto uterine fold seen posteriorly, the recto vaginal folds seen posteriorly and a pair of broad ligaments which are seen on the lateral aspect. Now what we see here is again a specimen of the uterus. Here we see the uterus with the fallopian tubes, the ovary and seen clearly here is the broad ligament on either side. Now broad ligament is a bilaminar fold of peritoneum extending from the lateral border of the uterus up to the lateral pelvic wall. It is quadrilateral in shape having two surfaces, an antero-inferior surface and a postero-superior surface. And it has got four borders, a superior free border, an inferior border, a medial border and a lateral border. Now let us see the two surfaces. The antero-inferior surface is related to the upper surface of the urinary bladder and the paravesical fossa. The posterosuperior surface gives attachment to the mesovarium. What we see here, if we reflect the uterine tube down, this is the ovary and this part which we see here, bilaminar fold, is seen on the posterior or posterosuperior surface of the broad ligament and that is the mesovarium. So, posterosuperior surface shows presence of the mesovarium. The superior border is the free border. The medial two, the medial three fourths of this superior free border is what is going to enclose the uterine tube and that is what forms the mesosalpings. The lateral one-fourth forms the suspensory ligament of the ovary. The lower border or the base of the broad ligament is attached to the pelvic floor and is related to the ureter and the uterine artery. The medial border is attached to the lateral border of the uterus and contains the tortuous uterine vessels. The lateral border is attached to the lateral pelvic wall. Let us see what are the contents of the broad ligament. The broad ligament contains the uterine tube except its medialmost part which is the intramural part. It contains the proximal part of the round ligament of uterus. It contains the suspensory ligament of ovary, ovarian vessels, uterine vessels, tubules and duct of epopheron, tubules of paroferon, lymphatics, nerves and unstriped muscles of the uterus. What are the subdivisions of the broad ligament? First subdivision is the mesosalpings which is seen as a bilaminar covering seen around or seen enclosing the uterine tube. Next is the major component which is the mesometrium which extends from the ovary and its ligament to the base of the broad ligament and the third part is the mesovarium which is seen along the posteros superior surface of the broad ligament. Suspensory ligament of ovary which connects the ligament of ovary 
which connects the ovary and the uterine tube to the pelvic brim across the external iliac vessels so those were the major subdivisions of the broad ligament now let us see what are the supports of the uterus structural supports these are the ligaments like the mackendorff's ligament the round ligament of uterus uterosacral ligaments pubo cervical ligaments broad ligament and other peritoneal folds muscles which include the levator ani muscles of the pelvic diaphragm the perineal body muscles and fascia of urogenital diaphragm muscular tone of the abdominal parietes that maintains the intra abdominal pressure surrounding viscera like vagina urinary bladder sigmoid colon and small intestine the functional supports are factors maintaining the position of antiversion and anti flexion ligaments peritoneal investments and folds loose packing material of the parametrial tissue made up of fibro areolar and fibro muscular tissue now let us see the arterial supply of the uterus this is done by a pair of uterine arteries which are branches of the anterior division of internal iliac artery and a pair of ovarian arteries which are direct branches of the abdominal aorta the uterine artery has a tortuous course and anastomosis with the ovarian artery within the broad ligament uterine artery also gives ureteric vaginal cervical and coronary or arcuate branches the venous drainage of the uterus veins correspond to the arteries and drain into the systemic veins via the uterine and ovarian veins posteriorly the uterine veins communicate with the superior rectal vein establishing a porto cavel anastomosis the lymphatic drainage of the uterus the fundus and upper part of the body of the uterus drains into the pre aortic and lateral aortic lymph nodes following the ovarian blood vessels also into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes from the lower part of the body of uterus the lymphatics drain into the external iliac lymph nodes from the cervix part of the uterus laterally lymphatics drain into the external iliac and obturator lymph nodes posterolaterally into the internal iliac lymph nodes and posteriorly into the sacral lymph nodes nerve supply of uterus uterus is supplied by both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves via the ovarian and uterovaginal plexuses preganglionic sympathetic fibers arising from t12 and l1 spinal segments the sympathetic motor fibers act as vasoconstrictors and stimulate the uterine musculature preganglionic parasympathetic fibers are derived from s2 s3 and s4 spinal segments via pelvic splanchnic nerves these act as vasodilators and inhibit the uterine muscles activities of the uterus are mostly under hormonal control thus we have seen all the gross anatomical features of the uterus thank you